Hey everybody, welcome to Marriage and Martinis. I'm Adam. Here's Danielle. Hello. Can I do, before we, we always do this at the end, can I do like a quick shameless plug here for our book? For the show Shameless? <laughs> no. It's over. <laughs> I know, I never, I, I didn't, I stopped on season whatever. Yeah, I, I didn't, didn't watch the last it. season, but I want to. I didn't finish it. I don't know. It was great. I liked it. It was it's one of those things. Show. Yeah, it was yeah, incredible. Just mm-hmm. one of those shows for whatever reason you just stop watching. I don't know why I did. Yeah, now Lips new show. The Bear. Um, the Bear. What, Jeremy Allen White, is that his name? The Bear. You love him. Oh, do I love him? Yeah. There's been a lot of He's like cron- the perfect the perfect controversy. Contra controversy. Controversy. Yeah. You, your sister thinks he's ugly. <laughs> she thinks I'm crazy <laughs> right. for thinking he's hot. But he's like the perfect amount of dirty. He's like the perfect amount of bad boy. Right. You know, like, especially when you think about him in Shameless and he's like this intellect and, you know, he's like, he's almost like the Matt Damon character in Goodwill Hunting, yes. sort of. Yeah, 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 correct. But um, but then in Chef, he's he's also brilliant, you know, a different kind of brilliant, but he's also just like when he goes outside and he's very smokes similar his cigarettes character. and he's like... Ah, oh, I love him. That's the chef with the tattoos mm-hmm. and the smoking and the, like mm-hmm. the yeah. But in real life, I he's, that. he's super in love with his wife, and I think he's got a kid. Oh, that's too bad. Such a fucking bummer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so anyway, what I was gonna say is, um, check out the date night questions book on our website at marriagemartinis.com slash dnq and M and M podcast fifteen for fifteen percent off only to podcast listeners, and it's on Amazon, so you can buy it there too. We they just sold out. Which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I just sent more. So they will be available on Amazon any day now, too. So that's kind of cool. And we have one five star rating on there. Well, that's because people don't <laughs> rate without asking. Well, you know, a that's lot what of I was, that's we've why I'm gotten this up. so many emails from companies saying, hey, we do verified Amazon reviews. Have you seen those? Yes. So, so many of the reviews you see, first of all, podcast reviews, which we don't do. People buy podcast reviews. So please, please, please go rate and review for us because we do not do that. But on Amazon, also, apparently, you can buy. Yeah. Some you can buy ratings or reviews. And we make more money if you buy off our website, so we prefer it. But the the, the coupon is only on our website. Only not on, on our Amazon. website. But so. and and it's just we it's just better. But if you do buy on Amazon, please re, re, uh, leave us a, a nice review because again, we're not buying them. We want it to be authentic. Um We are organic. Not yeah. not the way we eat. No. But Everything that we've done is all organic and no buying anything. <laughs> that is correct. And it shows. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the one review on Amazon. <laughs> exactly. Right. Okay. So. And rate and review. Oh, I said rate and review on the podcast. Sorry. Okay. Sure. Please. All right. So we we just had like a quick, really quick little getaway. Mm-hmm. First time in, again, years, whatever it's been. Our last trip was Brooklyn. It's very exciting. It's possible. <laughs> right? But the, the two of us, yeah. Yeah. And then, so we just went into the city, into Manhattan for the night. And there's not much to say. It was too, like, nothing to even discuss. Like, well, it was what, so nice. It was wonderful. But it was so quick. It was so quick. Yeah. We, yeah. We got in. We chilled at the lounge we went to dinner we came home we chilled in the room the next day you walked around for three hours and then we came home i I did i walked around for three hours obviously we hate global warming but holy shit was it nice that it was 65 degrees and i'm like walking around the city in february and (laughs) funny story um i fell when I was walking in New York city, like I stepped in a pothole and I fell and you feel like you're going down so slowly and you're like thinking about it as you're going down and you're like, Oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. This is so embarrassing. And it was on like West Broadway. So there's tons of shoppers, but that wasn't even the bad part. The bad part was that after I fell, some young man came up to me and goes, excuse me, ma'am. Can I help you? Oh, really? I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm like the old woman who fell. I didn't know that. I That's know. He said, excuse crazy. me, ma'am. And I was like, oh, How shit. The fall was nothing. I scraped my knee and I ripped oh. my jeans. I, you know, I tried not to look him square in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. 30, maybe. I don't know. Oh, no. But ma'am. Yeah. Are you okay, ma'am? And I know he was trying to be nice, but I was like, can you just like... Can we quit it with the ma'am? No, <laughs> no, thank you. I, I realize you're being polite, but as if falling wasn't bad enough, now I'm a ma'am. Oh. 
You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. My, yeah. I mean, my, my self-esteem isn't great. <laughs> I mean, I lived in New York for years. I don't think I ever fell once. Now I'm like falling all over the place. Well, what is that? You fell in freeholds. I fell in. Fre- my, it's my equilibrium or something. It's oh. the sciatica. Or the heels. It was just, yeah, but they were just wedges. Okay. I don't know what that is. But okay. okay. <laughs> That's fine too. All right. Um, okay. So yeah, we're back. We're here. We're recording. I want to go back to the city. I don't. <laughs> what do you even say? I don't know. I. It was just so. It was just too. Fa- like it was like it didn't happen. Like it did. Obviously, we had a great time, but it was so fast. I'm. I'm sad. Yeah, it's amazing how relaxed you can be when you're not in your house, mm-hmm. and like not in your town. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Like there's there was no. Do we just kind of like did whatever we wanted for 24 hours? <laughs> Especially after our night after dinner, after coming back to the hotel. I went out. We were in the East Village. I went out. The only thing available was snacks everywhere, which is perfect because that's what we were looking for, right? But it was kind of cool. Like I found all these little <laughs> tiny snack places that they're all these imported international, like Japanese Skittles and, you know, Korean Kit Kats and like mm-hmm. those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was so much fun. Yeah. Like I brought those back up to the room. We watched some TV and At, had those by snacks. By 10 o'clock. <laughs> by 10 o'clock, yep. we were in bed. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. So sliding doors moments. We Recently, I have been telling this story about one of my sliding doors moments so much. And you'll find out why. But it relates to the fact that Mia is a senior. A lot of her friends are seniors, you know, and they're all sort of anticipating, you know, most of them are applying to college. A few of them aren't, but they like have their sights set on other things that they want to do. And, um, you know, it's been a good lesson for me in, um, you know, when people say like, you know, what people would say to her, she would say, I'm applying early. And they would say, oh, I'm sure you'll get in. And I'd just be like, don't, don't, please don't, don't mm. say that. Or like college is going to be the best four years of your life. You know, all these things that sort of like you, you mean well, but it, it, a little bit, I'm sort of like, can we not, can we not just like she might not get in or it might not be the best four years or, and then she feels like a failure if, you know, it doesn't work out like that. And college is hard or whatever it is following high school. Look, every stage is hard. But, you know, anything following high school. But you'll find out how that relates. But I keep telling this this story um, ad nauseum to, like, every single friend she has over or, you know, I've always told it to my nieces and nephews. or So I sort of was thinking about that the other day. And then I listened to a podcast episode and they were they mentioned a sliding doors moment. And I was like, oh, yeah, we should do a whole episode on that. So that's my okay. inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite getting the relation between the story and the slide. Okay, good. So yeah. I'll learn just as everybody else does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, but so you never saw the Sliding Doors movie, is no, that correct? No, I never did. Oh, we got to watch it. I watched the um, the trailer, mm-hmm. and I, I, I still didn't quite get it. Yeah, the, trailers, the trailer is terrible. Well, the weird thing is I went on, I just, you know, used Siri to say, hey, you know, play the Slot the the sliding doors trailer, and it was like a moment of the movie, not like a trailer. You mm-hmm, know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I went to YouTube, and f- number one, it looked like it was from nineteen seventy four. Yeah, uh, it was it was nineteen ninety like na- late ninety eight. Yeah, and I I kind of understood, but like just enough to get the gist of what this is. Well, I'll so. tell you also, it was 1998, Gwyneth Paltrow stars in it. It's the same year that Shakespeare in Love came out, which was she won an Oscar for that. Mm-hmm. But it's funny because Sliding Doors wasn't really a big movie, but yet everybody refers to it, you know, when you think about like a Sliding Doors moment or any, like that's the... So like what's a quick, like what is, what, so, what's okay. that movie? Sliding Doors, the film that resulted, um, so that the... the The guy who wrote it, he almost got hit by a car. And that experience was what he based the movie on. Like Mm -hmm. in that moment when he almost got hit by a car, um, he was like, oh, my God, like, holy shit, my life could have just ended or I could have been paralyzed or whatever in that one moment. And I didn't. I'm okay." And so, you know, from being freaked out, which I think we all have moments of that, right, where it's like we almost get in an accident or, you know, something happens and you're sort of like, holy fuck, that could have gone so disastrously wrong. Mm -hmm. 
And he's like, oh, that would make a great movie. So, um, so basically, he introduces us to Helen, who is Gwyneth Paltrow's character, a public relations executive. I don't know why this is important, but with bangs, brown hair, and a bad boyfriend. Poor did Helen. That, did that mean something in the 90s? Well, did having bangs mean you were a... Well, I think there's two versions of her in the movie, depending on, you know, because yeah. it shows both ways. You know, right, both. if she got in the bus or not. Yeah, so I think in one, she has brown hair and bangs, you know, and then like in the other, she looks completely different. Okay. You can see in the um, picture of the movie it shows. But Helen suddenly gets fired on a Monday morning and has to leave her office immediately. She leaves for the train, which is pulling into the station just as she's running down the stairs. And we see in a single moment, Helen's life split into two versions. In the first, she catches the train and sits beside James. And in the second, she misses it and finds that there are no more trains running on that line. The film follows both versions of Helen's story. So it's literally the whole film is going back and forth and back and forth. And I don't want to give away the ending, but you see where she ends up in both versions. Okay. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's it's great. You, I mean, look, it's a 1998, you know, it's one of those things where if you didn't see it when it was out, it's going to seem kind of like archaic now a little bit. So is it too late for me? Because I wanted to watch it. No, no, watch it. And I think you could watch it with Ian. I think he would like it. Oh, really? It's a, just, a, it's different. You know, it's a different kind of film. Even though now, you know, there's like uh, the Midnight Library, the, the book that I, I, I read it. I read it a while ago, so I don't quite remember it, but it's I'm probably getting this wrong because I I'm I'm so bad at retaining what I read. But um, it's a, a girl who contemplates suicide and um, or she 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 tries to commit suicide. And while she's sort of in between two worlds of like life and death. It goes through all these other versions of her life that could have been. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she's single. She broke up with her boyfriend. Um, you know, at one point she um, wanted to be a singer, I think. In one version, she's, you know, it's, it flashes before her eyes all these different versions of her life, you know, that she could have taken. It's cool. It's mm -hmm. a very cool book. I didn't love it as much as everybody else, but it's a very cool book. I'm sure there's lots of movies about this Right, topic, right? right? But they all end up with like all the, the decisions that you made were the right one and you ended up where you were supposed to be. And like, well, it's like the first episode of the pilot of Friends where Rachel walks into um, uh, Central Park mm -hmm. in her wedding dress. You know, Rachel Green, mm -hmm. she's just left the altar of her, um, you know, perfect Jewish orthodontist fiance. And that's where friends begins right. by like this one decision that she made, mm -hmm. you know. So um, yeah, so I just think it's a fun topic, yeah. but it, but it's also a deep, heavy topic in some ways. I mean, this can go into so many different. I'll use the word dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Uh -huh. But uh, this can go. You know, this mm -hmm. is like philosophized. This is scienceified. This is. <laughs> You know, all the fives. It's five. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. So do you want to start with like some of our sliding door moments? Sure. That, all right. So are you going to make me go first like always? I right? am going to yeah. make you go first. Okay. Uh, just the one that stuck out in my mind for me was deciding to go out with you, right? Because our for our second first date, I had, I was set up for two dates. It was you and another woman or girl at that time, you know, like 20 year old, whatever. Um, and I was like, I got to go meet Danielle. Like that's where I'm feeling I need to go, you know? So I had the choice. I had to make a decision. Where am I going? Who am I calling? Who am I canceling? Right. And I was like, I need something's, I feel it. Something's going on. I need to go meet Danielle. Right. That's. Is that a sliding door moment? Yeah, I, I mean, it it's is. a decision that right. you made that, so you had a date that night. Yeah. Who, what was she like? Who was this girl? I don't know. It was AOL chat. <laughs> AOL. It, well, it, was, it wasn't from like J-Date or anything. It was like an oh, actual. Oh, wait. No, no, no. It was. It okay. was J-Date. Yes, it was J-Date, which is another. Jewish sl dating service. Another sliding door moment in itself, mm -hmm. which led to this point, mm -hmm. right? So, so that was, the, the irony in that was, it was only a week previous to you and I meeting that I went on to J-Date and you found me, right? I wasn't even on there before that. So that was kind of a weird thing too. I just 
happened to be at my friend's apartment who happened to have just signed up for J date and who happened to have told me about it. And I happened to have created an account and you found me a week, like all these little, I found steps. you the first night I went on it. Right. And I was only there for a week before that. Right. And so like that was in itself, its own little mm -hmm. sliding door moment where if I didn't create the account, we never would have met mm -hmm. again. Yeah. And that, that it's so funny. I was dating this asshole when I was in New York. I mean, he was an asshole. I don't even know why. Like I say to myself, like, why did I date him? But yet he was the one who told me about J date. And then I literally so came funny. home that night and said to Sarah, to my roommate, we got to check out this J date. We mm -hmm. got to see who's on there. You know, I would like put in and I put in my home zip code rather than like my, you know, my childhood zip code rather than my college New York zip code for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. And you popped up. But again, it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't Adam, you know, lives in. It was, you know, Mac Daddy 69 or handsome, whatever. Handsome Man 1997. Handsome Man 1977. <laughs> you know, it was all like nicknames. Right. But I recognized you immediately. And I was like, holy shit, I, I know that guy. I Did was like, holy shit, I... I hooked up with that guy. We did say this before. Did we have nickname? I don't remember yes. what my real nickname was. I don't either. I, I have no idea what that was. I don't was. either. But yeah, but so anyway, I had, through J-Date, I had met another girl, and I, had, you had contacted me after I had met her, and I had already made plans with this girl to meet with her on the same night you wanted to meet up. Mm -hmm. And I said, something's telling me I got to go meet Danielle. And this was when... um online dating was still very taboo like you didn't yeah. tell anybody well there wasn't much right there wasn't so many options no but you didn't tell it like it was like a hush hush kind of thing like you were embarrassed to tell now yeah. it's you know well there was no apps there was no smartphone there was no like i had a beeper <laughs> at that time right. i had my motorola candy bar phone and a right. beeper right. you know like uh -huh. <laughs> there was uh -huh. no dating apps yeah it was a website yeah <laughs> I, I think everybody with their person who they meet, you know, they're they're if they meet a partner or whatever, for better or for worse, you know, there's an obvious there's a moment when, you know, either you, you would have gone on a date with this person or you didn't want to go on the blind date or, you know, like I feel like almost everybody probably has a story like that. You know, you weren't going to go to the bar that night and then you mm -hmm. wouldn't have, you know, I wasn't yep. going to move to such and such. And I so I think that's like very, you know, a, I mean, a probably like one of the biggest sliding doors moment stories is probably right. and I, I having wanna, to do with how you met a, a partner, either your ex or your person you're with now. You know, I want to touch upon that a little bit after because that's something else that we have to talk about too. Okay. So we'll get there. So why don't you give us one of yours? Okay. Um, so my, my, well, I should probably do the second one first because it, it's chronological. Are yours chronological? Uh, they are not. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to go chronological. <laughs> so when I was in sixth grade, um, I, I was, I guess I was like on the cusp of the popular group, whatever that means, you know, the stupid like middle school stuff. Um, and, uh, I had these friends who, there was just like a lot of drama, you know, the, the girls were always getting mad at each other or mad at me. Or one week I walked into school and they just all decided they weren't talking to me. And I was sort of like, I was done with it. I had had it. I was so sad, you know, it was awful. And in my class, this was before we switched classes in my sixth grade class, there was a girl who, um, was very, very quiet, uh, very like almost you know mysterious she missed school a lot um you know she had the, her own style she wore like doc martens and she had uh all these rock band pins on her backpack you know while we were still wearing like you know children's place you know mm -hmm. like outfits she um you know she had this really like long hair that sort of she sort of like hit her face with and just all these things but I was always so like enamored with her every time I would see her you know she she didn't have a lot of friends she definitely wasn't friends with my friends um I never knew her before but I really really was taken with her like I wanted to be her friend and um I one day finally when one of my friends got mad at me um I was finally like you know what I'm just going to go up to her. And I went up to her in class. And I remember saying to her, like, we didn't even really talk of her before. I was like, do you want to come over this weekend? And she was like shocked. She couldn't, you know, I think I'd never really, we'd never really spoken before. And she didn't really speak much. And, and she said yes. And, you know, with 
in addition to one other friendship I've had for a long time, um, that really has been the most life changing friendship of my, you know, of my lifetime. It's it. It has been. We're still very close with her, Rebecca. Um, and you know, so I, this was Becca. This was Becca. Okay, I, that's where I thought you were going with it. Yeah. And yeah. if you never did that, we would never have met. Well, so many things. You know, <laughs> right. I had so many experiences that I didn't know I was going to have going up to her. But you know, we went to. She took her her. Uh, aunt and uncle were producers in Hollywood and we went every summer and stayed with them. And, you know, we just, we just, it, it was like fate to some degree. Like, I don't know how else to explain it because why did I want to go up to her so badly? You know, it was just very strange. And again, to this day, we are very close. And yes, she ultimately, four or five years later, introduces me to you Um, you know, so had I not gone up to her in that moment and just sort of been like, oh, you know, people are my friends are probably going to be pissed if I talk to somebody outside the quote unquote group or whatever, not my life would be completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. You're just trying to show what a good person you are. That's why I gave that story. Well, I use that story all the time, you know, with our kids. Mm -hmm. All the time because, you know, our middle son, who is 14 and, you know, struggles a little bit socially and everything, he oftentimes will be like, you know, I'll say, go up to somebody, talk to them, blah, blah, blah. you know, like I'm always and he's like, no, you know, we don't they don't look like somebody who I'd be close with or blah. And I'm like, that pisses me like I can't stand it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you never. That's ridiculous. Thank, And I always say, because they know and love Rebecca. And I'm like, imagine if I had been like, oh, she dresses differently. You know, she's, she's you know, alternative or whatever. Imagine if I if I had like not gone up to her that day because of any kind of preconceived notions or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I, I'm constantly telling that to especially yeah. to our middle son. All right. We'll take a break. Okay. And then come back and finish. Okay. Okay. All right. I want to get into like one of, I think my biggest sliding door moments of my life, which I think I'm, I'm still like struggling with the sliding door thing. I think I get it. I didn't see the movie, but I understand it. And it was when I was in high school and I was, you know, ADD, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, diagnosed. Diagnosed. Thank you. Um, so I was put on Ritalin and I was, hanging out with friends one day and all my band guys and all my friends, you know, we're just hanging out. And one guy just shouts out, Hey, let's snort it. Oh, <laughs> Can we put a disclaimer? Don't snort. Do Ritalin. not <laughs> do that. Do not do that because that was a moment in my life that changed the rest of my life mm. because we did. And I didn't stop. And it, it was for like two years. So, you know, that's what led me to getting my bad grades in school. Like, I always got bad grades in school. I was not Isn't a, that so interesting that the, the drug that's supposed to right. make you do better in school and focus more is all, was ultimately like Yeah, your, it's fucking cocaine. Like, it was... Is that really... No, it's, it's, it's speed. It's, just, you know, it's, just, it's the same. As a matter of fact, I've only done coke once in my life. I like Ritalin better when I was doing it than when I tried the coke. I was like, fuck this. This is nothing. Let's go back to my Ritalin. You know, like, and that's. So you wh- didn't know about that you, snorting it was something you could do until that person said it. I had it. no idea. No, I was 17. Like, I didn't know, mm. you know, yeah, 17. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what led to so much of my, you know, going away to college and failing out in six months because I didn't make it to one class because I was partying in Boston the whole time. Like, all these things that led to me not you know, laying out a path for me for the rest of my life and fucking everything up and coming back home, cleaning myself up and going to work. And that's what I did. Which like, thank goodness you were able to do that. But yeah, thank God I was able to do that. Right. But, but you know, what, what could have been the possibilities? What could I have done? What, Mm. what are the things that I was interested in doing? Luckily, you know, I, we've said so many times, I'm not a religious person, but thank God, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I was able to, number one, clean myself up and come off it. And number two, have a family business to fall back on because I had nothing else, right? If I didn't have that, 
uh, who knows? Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't, you know, I'd have to start from scratch and start over and find a thing, right? But, you know, if that hadn't happened, if I was able to pursue my passions and go into, you know, music or finance or some kind of science degree or some kind of, like, things that interested me, like, what path would that have taken me on? Where would I be now? What have I, what could I have accomplished? What could I have done? Mm. You know? Right. It was that one God, stupid yes. fucking 17 year old decision that changed the course of my life. Do you remember who said it? Yes, I do. You'll tell me later. <laughs> you, you don't even know who he is. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh my, I'm sure that there are so many people and that, you know, it's so interesting because we, we think to ourselves like, okay, you know, you want your kids in some ways to experiment and, you know, like uh, obviously it depends with what, but you have to really kind of also point out to them, like there are certain things that you don't even try once. Like you shouldn't even do once because you, you can't keep yourself, you know, there's a very good chance mm -hmm. you won't be able to only do it once. Right. You know, I mean, there are like, you know, there are certain things that you just stay far away from. Yeah. I think we have a better understanding of what those things are today versus 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, I had not until you told me you did it when we were first dating. Um, I had never heard of that. Yeah. You know, oh, that was huge. Your, I mean, I, I knew lots of people who did drugs, but I didn't know of anybody. Who I mean, did in the 90s, that was a big deal when wow. Ritalin became a thing. And, you know, I could sell pills. I could, you know, mm. I, I knew people who wanted to buy them. Like, I was doing all that shit. And I was like, fuck that. I'm selling them. Now I don't have them for myself. I don't have a guy. I just have my pharmacy because I'm prescribed. So we should check I'm the statute limited. of limitations on that before we publish this episode. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Don't do that. Right. Is that right. enough? Of course. I mean, of course. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it f fucked me up yeah. for, you know, a good two years of my... Do you think you have, like, physical long-lasting effects from it? I don't. Um, there was a there was a point where... Because like, you have, like, sinus shit and everything. Not really. I don't think it's that bad. When Do you I? wake up in the morning and everything, you... Maybe it's gotten better. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think I have... Oh, okay. Like, I know, I know some people, you know, if... Some people do too much coke or too much snorting, whatever they're snorting. Like you can get a a hole in your bridge of your nose, like those things. Like no, nothing like that mm -hmm. is you know. But I mean, it was fucking crazy. Like mm -hmm. I I went on benders for for days. Like I didn't sleep for four days straight. That I was hallucinating. Torture. I mean, I it's not torture when you're going through it because you don't. You're not in reality. But like, that's literally how they torture people is keeping them awake. Yeah, but you're not on something to compensate for the difference. Got you know it. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was literally not sleeping for four days straight, not eating because you don't eat either. Right. And you become a like a like like a vampire. Like mm. you, your your skin tone just becomes white and green. Or, you know, like you haven't eaten in four days. You haven't slept in four days. Like it's it was pretty bad i think to myself a lot how different you looked in high school not just you know because you were younger or whatever but your face was so like gaunt you know it was like just very that was during those times yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and you had these enormous black circles mm -hmm. under your eyes and you know it just like when i look back at pictures and i look at you now you know it's like you can usually look at somebody's high school picture and their regular picture and look, obviously, a lot of times, you know, they've gained weight or their hairstyle is different or there's a there's this crazy difference in you, like you're, you're you know, like a healthy. Well, the thing was also like I look at pictures <clears throat> back when I was, let's say, 19 versus 21 mm -hmm. and the transformation or the transition, whatever is so ridiculous. Like I look at myself at 21 and I'm like, not bad, you know, <laughs> like good looking dude, you know? Uh -huh. And I compare it to my 19 year old self. And I'm like, that guy looks like he is a fucking zombie. Strung out. Totally. Strung yeah. Out. Yeah. Yeah. That's the word I would use. Yeah. yeah. Strung out. Crazy. Huh. I mean, I had a few bloody noses here and there, but yeah. <laughs> beyond that. Right. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that because, you know, even though I never did drugs, I did so much stupid shit in high school. I mean, driving with people who were intoxicated, like all the things that you, God, you hope your kids never fucking do. Mm -hmm. um, and again, different times, you know, whatever. But I think all the time back to like, holy shit, 
what would have happened, you know, if we got pulled over or in an accident or, you know, your entire future can kind of go out the window, Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, yeah, doing those things today, your life is over, you know, like back then. No, your life is still, you're still going to get, you were, we were. You still would have gotten in huge trouble. I mean, God forbid you got in an accident, you hurt somebody, or you. Correct. Oh my God. Yeah. But you know, that's one of those things that I'm like, you know, I think to myself sometimes, how much is luck and chance? And you know, sometimes you think to yourself, like, is somebody watching over me? But then, like, I only want them watching over me during certain times because I don't want them watching over me during other times. Uh-huh. And, you know, it's all like, of course, there's part of me that is like, oh, maybe it's my grandpa. And then there's part of me that's like, of course, it, it must have just been chance or luck or, you know, all of these questions of like, again, you you did something, but I did shit all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, different kinds of shit. And I, I, I oh my God. Right. But I, I did. So, yeah, I guess you did too. Doesn't oh, matter. I did horrible. I mean, yeah. like the, when I think back, I'm like, I, thank God my parents didn't know, mm-hmm. you know? So. All um, right. Let's yeah. move on a little faster with those that we're still on our first question. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, my <laughs> second one I can do quickly. Okay. Um, so. I, I, I've spoken about it a little bit in an episode a long time ago. When I was in college during the summer, um, there was one summer where I worked in this program for inner city kids. Um, and it was, um, you know, I worked alongside a lot of other teenagers who were from the inner city. And I was sort of the only one who wasn't. Um, the, the director of the program was awful. I mean, she was just horrible. She She just would, like, come in... Um, you know, she would stop in like all fancied up and we'd all be like sweating in this school and, um, you know, she'd make all these promises and break them and everything. My mom worked at the program too, because she volunteered, uh, all the time with this organization. So there was one day where the woman, the head woman, she had told us that every Friday she was going to get us pizza for lunch. And, you know, I was fed up with her to begin with. And, um, I think it was the second or third Friday of the program. She came in and, you know, it was lunchtime and we were like, okay, we walked into the room and, you know, we said, you know, we're here for pizza. She's like, I didn't get pizza. And here we all are like hungry and hot and, you know, not, not, there's no DoorDash or anything. You know, you can't just like in 10 minutes have food. And I was pissed. (laughs) I mean, I was pissed, you know, I think a little bit, maybe I was like, you know, I look back and I was like, okay, I was sticking up for, in my mind, I was sticking up for people who, you know, maybe couldn't stick up for themselves, but also a little bit, I'm sure I did it in a very immature, you know, I probably wasn't very mature about it. I probably didn't say the right things or whatever, but still the whole thing was a shit show. How, how she hands, you know, just, it was just a bad experience and she fired me on the spot. Like, in front of everybody, it was super humiliating and unfair in my mind. My mom did not leave. She stayed, which was a different kind of trauma for me. Like, sort of, I think I sort of felt like, on the one hand, I understood she worked with this program a long time. On the other hand, I was like, well, nobody's protecting me. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think I became terrified of having a boss. And I was going into my sophomore year of college And I think my whole like landscape of what I what I wanted to do or what I thought I was cut out to do, I knew I wanted to do something that I wouldn't be in a situation again where just like on the spot I could get fired. Like I it traumatized me. And so I often think to myself, had I not spoken up that day or, you know, had that not happened or whatever, would I have been a little bit braver and a little more confident or a lot more confident in my decisions about work? I still to this day, I think I'm tra- I'm like a little traumatized by it. Really? Today? <sighs> yeah, a Is little. It, are you just saying that so you don't have to go work somewhere or something? I'm fucking working. No, I said go work somewhere. Oh. For somebody. <laughs> no, I think... um. No, I think I, I, I it's maybe a, a, a discipline thing. Like I'm, I'm petrified of getting in trouble or, you know, like 
it just it really traumatized me. It was really bad. And again, look, I was young. I don't know that I handled it the best way I could. I also think it really I mean, she was awful to everybody. Maybe, but, maybe we can fix this for you. We can like role play mm-hmm. and I'll be like the boss who's <laughs> meaning to you and, <laughs> mm-hmm. and you know, and the I'll fact let you... that you think you could role play in the bedroom <laughs> is the first issue here. OK, let's get past that first. <laughs> I want to be the demeaning boss to you. And, right. Exactly. You know, I'll let you win. Yeah. You know, okay. And you you say your piece and uh-huh. show me. Put let's me in go. My place. Go ahead. I'll call your bluff. <laughs> I think that sounds fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you have one more, go ahead. I don't have another one. So, oh. yeah. Um, well, I, yes, my last one I referred to in the beginning, which, and I think about it again all the time because right now Mia is a senior and, you know, her, her whole world is what am I doing after high school? Like all her friends. And, um, and for me, you know, when I was younger, again, I was sort of the kid of the family who was like, quote unquote, the problem child, right? And my brother was this brilliant, you know, wonderful guy still is my sister was this you know level-headed wonderful girl still is and I was sort of like the third you know leftover sperm again I was like the third child Uh so um and I went to the same school as them and you know just my whole life was in their shadow you know that I was sort of not the same kid that they were um and I applied early to college um and Really thought I was going to get in, right? I was very confident that I was going to get into this college. I was, you know, very, very excited. Um, And, you know, back then, now it's email that you find out or through a portal. Back then, it was an envelope Mm -hmm. that comes. You know, and if it's a thick envelope, it's good, like a thick, big envelope. If it's a thin envelope, you know you're kind of fucked. So I was at work. I call my mom. I'm like, is it a thick envelope or a thin envelope? And I remember her being quiet. And I was like, oh, fuck. And I took it really, really hard. But again, for like a week, I didn't talk to anybody. I was humiliated. I stayed in bed, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward, I looked at other schools because I had to, you know. I got deferred. I didn't get rejected. But I was like, well, I guess I got to look at other schools. And I I looked at NYU. And I went there. um, I got in. And I went there. And I, I did an interview after I went there, which I don't remember why after I got in. I mean, I don't remember why, but I remember the woman at one point saying to me, oh, and I got in to that school, the, the school that I applied early, regular decision. So I'm now making a choice between like a few schools, you know, which is going to turn one's in Boston, one's in New York, well, you know, like all, di- all over the place. And I remember she said to me during the interview, when I still was thinking I wanted to go to the school that I had, you know, gotten rejected from early and gotten into regular. at NYU. At NYU. I'm in an interview, you know, just going like seeing my options, but still thinking I'm going to go to Boston. And um, she said to me during the interview, we want you here. And those four words, I was like, done done like nobody had ever said that to me you know we Mm -hmm. want you here like I had spent my whole academic life like being in the shadows and you know and you know the other school had like had deferred me and so I you know I didn't feel wanted by them anymore and it was just like when she said that I can still remember remember the tingles that I got I was like oh fuck I'm coming here Mm -hmm. and look Maybe that's her tactic. Maybe she says that to everybody. Right. I don't know. But it just speaks to the power of making somebody feel wanted, making mm-hmm. someone feel valued. And in my entire educational career, I had never felt that. And, you know, so for the first time, I wasn't just getting into a school because my family was going there and I was legacy or, you know, I was they wanted me. And thank God I did. Again, same kind of thing. You know, I moved to New York. I moved 10 blocks from my sister, who we were not close before we went to New York. She became my person. Um, wouldn't have met you, wouldn't, you know, or re-met you. Wouldn't, like, like all, my best friend in the world wouldn't have met her. Like, all these things. Um, you know, look, maybe had I gone to Boston instead, I'd be living on an island with a multi-million. Like, who the fuck knows? Mm-hmm. But, I'm sorry I can't be that for you. <laughs> <laughs> But I still wouldn't be super close with my sister. I still, you know what I mean? Like all of these things. And happily married. And how, fuck, yeah. (laughs) Fuck, yes, happily married. But, you know, I I just, to me, it's the power of we want you here. Like Mm -hmm. that 
is powerful. Yeah, right? I, know, I know. That's what you said to me the first night we met in New York. And you asked me to come back to your place, and uh-huh. you said, we want you here. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, actually, the other night when we were in the city, a little, uh, you know, TMI, but when we got into bed and we started, like, kissing and stuff, you said to me, I have been waiting for this. <laughs> and you did. did. Why are you laughing? No, I know. I did. <laughs> I know. And I, like, I was like, oh. You know, I like loved that because it just, well, I don't know, it gave a different kind of like, oh, he's been waiting for this. Like he, I mean, maybe you were waiting for it like since I came out of the bathroom or something. No, I don't we know. were watching these, the movie on the couch and we're like, and I'm like, can we just go to fuck, like to myself? Can we just do this already? Oh, like, I, I didn't just know. Want you to, like, I didn't now. know. <laughs> like, I don't want to watch your movie anymore. Well, I knew you hated everything we were putting <laughs> on. But, but, but again, it's that like, and, and I think that sometimes, you know, when I'm talking to people or whatever, like that, that feeling of. I want to see you. I need to see you. I, mi- you know, all of those things that you don't think to say, but are so impactful. Like that, that feeling of being needed, of being wanted. And those four words changed my, the entire course of my future. You know, mm-hmm. had she not said that to me, I probably would have gone to Boston, mm-hmm. you know? Wow. Yeah. Every person who ever got into NYU was like, oh yeah, she said that to me too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. You're not the only one. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, Okay, so that was question number one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go through what we think we should use. Do we need to take another break? The, yeah, we're going to take one now. Oh. But just what do you think? I mean, that was question one. All right, oh. we'll be right back. Okay. Let's go to question three. And I think we'll leave it at that for this episode. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, we, we are time constraint today. <laughs> Is that right? Is that proper? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know the words. Okay. Um, all right, so you asked me, do you believe in destiny or do you think we are complete or that we are completely the navigators of our own life? Or is there something else interfering? And if so, what? Um, you answered this, right? I mean, I have an answer. Okay. Like I can I know in the top of my head what I think. Okay, so it's whether like do we believe in destiny or fate? is there yeah, is it fate and is there something else control? Like do we have free will? That whole discussion, right? Um and t- like, honestly, I just think we're all living in a simulation and we're all just programmed to think that we have free choice and that's it. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, see, you don't know the word on the science <laughs> stuff. Literally, when you were saying that, it was like, you know, that movie Inside Out where there's like the emotion people in the kid's head yeah, and yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Literally, like my emotion people were like, all right. <laughs> You're done. Peace out. <laughs> like when I hear those kind of words like quantum and what did you say? I don't have that yet, but we're, okay, that, but that we're living in a simulation. Yeah, simulate. I'm <laughs> like, like literally my mind is like, all right, we're out of here. Okay. I don't really believe like, that. Just smile and nod. <laughs> it's fun to think about, but no, I don't really believe that we, who knows? I mean, could it be a simulation? I don't, do you know what that means? No, you don't. Right. A simulation. Yeah. So like, Is it like AI, like the, I don't even know what that like means. The Sims are a simulation, right? It's a computer program of a oh, world. It's like ready player one that, right. We don't exist. We're just a computer program, right? Just like the Sims are like when Mia plays the Sims. Why can you feel it's all programmed? Like it's all like to the next level programming to whoever created and us. this is what right? i chose <laughs> so <laughs> right I, there's all that that's a whole nother uh-huh. right uh-huh. Th- i don't really mm-hmm. i i don't subscribe to that mm-hmm. belief but who knows mm-hmm. you, n- you never know right but i i'd like to think that we're in control of our destiny and you know our actions and our you know, when our communications, all the things that we do that we control those things. I would like to think that's the case. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes we look at certain situations and we call it like destiny or it was meant to be or whatever. Like, for example, like when I decided I want to meet Danielle, not this other girl. Right. And because I met you, we got married. We had kids. We have this life. We have this whole like, and so it was meant to be, right? But if I didn't and I met this other girl and it worked out, I would have said the same thing. Mm-hmm. But what you about know? the fact that all roads sort of led me back to you, right? Like in high school yeah. and then, you know, in college and then in college again. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, it does sort of, there's part of me that even though I don't believe in destiny, 
there was definitely, I mean, there's no other person who I just kept kind of getting. Right. I mean, you can definitely. That night, I looked at JD and you were on there, and I somehow, like, even though I hated you to some sense, something still drew me to reach out to you. And, you know, and there was part of me that was like, he, he's, he might, be. if I didn't think down deep that you were a good guy, I don't think I would have reached out. Right. But isn't there an explanation for all those circumstances, right? Like when we met for the yes alcohol first time, <laughs> second time, not met in New York. Like I just happened to be at a friend's place in the city, and he was like, "Hey, Danielle's here." You know, and I was like, "All right, let's call her." We didn't yeah, meet up. You, that no, night. you were like, "All right, yeah, I want to hook up tonight." Right, like I want somebody easy. Like it, it just happened to be. Uh-huh. You know, like uh-huh. it was it destiny? Was it like, oh, I should remember? Well, no, the you name. didn't even come. Right, but it was it something put in place for me to remember you for an, for two years later. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like I met you two years previous to that and then your name came up again and then we met again. Like, I don't know. Uh-huh. I don't know. It's all very strange. Yeah, I don't really believe in destiny either, but I do think that there is, you know, there is some kind of a, I don't know what it is, but like a, a pull towards certain things, you know? I mean... You know, for all intents and purposes, the first school that I applied to, I should have gotten in. I should not have gotten into NYU. I was, I I did not, I'm not a good enough student. I don't, you know, like I, my SATs were shit, like all this stuff. The first school I applied to was like a ringer. Everybody was like, oh, that's where you're applying. You're going to get in there. That's mm-hmm. no problem, you know, and I didn't. And then I end up like when I, I remember when we, when I got into NYU, my dad was like, was there a mix up? Like hmm. I, I shouldn't have gotten in. So I don't know. Sometimes when it comes to this, there are certain times when I'm like, all right, well, that's a whole lot of fucking coincidences. Like how many right. coincidences equal a not coincidence? <laughs> that's a major math problem right there. <laughs> but so, right. So if we erase the idea of free will and everything is like predetermined and pre-controlled, there's just so much that doesn't make sense. Like, right. why, why do certain people walk out their front door and get hit by a bus? Like, what did that... Right. What's the point of their existence from birth till that point? And what did that solve moving forward? Because they get hit by a bus. Two That's other, like the butterfly effect, right? Yeah, we'll get into okay. that. We're going to split this up. Yeah, we have we to. You. We have to split this episode. Gotta. And we're going to get into that in the next one. Mm-hmm. Sorry. So I'm not saying we're going to get into it later. Mm-hmm. Next time. Okay, but, maybe Gwyneth Paltrow will come but, on. But things happen, and if it if it was predetermined, like why? What's the point? Like why did that person get hit by a bus? What did that? What problem did that solve? Like why? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like why? Why did whoever mean for us to meet on J date and this person to get hit by a bus? Like you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> really? Like what's like why is who's Pulling the chains, you know, who's pulling the, the, the thread, the strings. Yeah, the, the puppeteer. Yeah, the puppet- right. Yeah. So <laughs> why why is their puppet hitting by a bus and we're meeting at Jade and Merchants on 13th Street? You right. know, like, right. you know what right. I mean? Like, it doesn't right. make sense. Such good philosophical questions. Yeah. It doesn't I make know. sense to me. We should really, we should be a philosophy podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so we'll do a part two for sure. Yeah, I'm bummed we didn't get into the science stuff. But we will. Right? Now yeah, you okay. have more of an opportunity. Yeah. And I'm just going to like sit here the next time and, you know, play like solitaire in my head. I can't even do that. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. No way. Um, all right. Please rate and review if you haven't. Uh, if you haven't bought the date night questions book and. Oh, fuck. All right. Yeah. Thank you. That's why I did it in the front. So we you... don't have to do it in the end. <laughs> so we don't have to... <laughs> it should be so we don't have to do it in the back. Right, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> I was speaking too quickly. All okay. right, everyone. On that note. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Love, love you. you. Bye. Bye.